Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we'll be covering the topic B rates of reaction of Unit 3 Physical Chemistry of Adexel IGCSC Chemistry. And this video will be covering the specification 3.9 till 3.14. And in this video, we'll be looking over how do we calculate the rate of a reaction and how the rate of reaction depends on surface area, concentration, temperature, pressure and catalyst and what are the effects of changing the surface area, concentration, pressure and temperature on rate of a reaction. How we can predict the uh, direction of the reaction with the changes in the physical condition, how do catalysts work and we'll be also looking at the energy profile diagram of a reaction with and without the catalyst. Now I would recommend you to watch this video till the end because in the end we'll be discussing some very important key terms which are uh, related to this topic. So let's begin. Now, what is a rate of reaction? Now, if you see any reaction, it has reactants and products. What happens to the reactants with time is that their concentration starts to fall. And on the other hand, the product's concentration starts to build up. So, this is the graph. The blue graph is of the products and this red graph is showing us the reactants that the level of the reactants is decreasing with time and the products is being built up. So in order to measure the rate of the reaction, what we can do, we can use the change in concentration of the reactants and the product. So rate of the reaction is concentration of product increase with time or decrease in the concentration of reactants with time. Now, how we can measure the concentration of the reactants or the product? Now, it depends on what kind of a reaction we are taking. So, if the reaction involves a solid reactant, we can weigh the mass of the reactants at different time intervals and plot the graph. And we'll see we'll get a shape of the graph, something like this, sloping downwards because the reactants decreases with time. On the other hand, if there's any reaction that involves gases, we can measure the volumes of gases evolved at different times in twelve, and we'll see that the graph looks like this, where volume of gases increases with time. And if there's any reaction that has a precipitate being formed, then we can measure the concentration of this precipitate by using a spectrophotometer and measuring the absorbance value. So these are the various ways in which we can measure and plot the rate of the reaction. And for any of these graphs, we can draw a tangent and then and find the difference in the y and the x axis to find the rate of the reaction. Now, the question is why we are starting the rate of reaction. We are starting rate of reaction because they are very important reaction industrially. For them, we want a greater rate so that we can make more money and more profit, and they are very useful to the mankind. So for them, it's very necessary for us to understand what factors affect the rate of the reaction and how we can alter them to increase the rate of reaction. So the factors that affect rate of reaction can be explained with the help of collision theory. Now, collision theory states that, remember, it's very important because any factor that is affecting rate of reaction comes in the exam. You need to answer about the collision theory. So collision theory has three parts. It says that for a reaction to take place, we require collision. And the particles should collide for the reaction to take place. And it's not just bumping into each other that will make up the reaction faster. All the particles should collide with the minimum energy required to start the reaction called the activation energy. So the collisions which have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy is the successful collision. So we first want collision, then we want successful collision with the energy greater than the activation energy. And apart from collisions and the activation energy, proper orientations of the reactants is also required for the reaction to take place. So what are the factors that can now affect the rate of reaction that are surface area, temperature, concentration of reactants, pressure and catalyst. Now we'll answer all these effects and explanation on the basis of collision theory. Now you can see low concentration, fewer collision, higher concentration, more particles to bump into each other, greater the rate of reaction. So 
we'll discuss the first factor how the concentration affects the rate of the reaction so for the concentration to affects rate of the reaction what we need to do when we increase the concentration the rate of the reaction increases now why it increases because there are more particles more collisions more collision more the chances of successful collision and greater the rate of reaction okay so if this question comes in the exam how concentration of reactant increases the rate of reaction make sure you explain the collision theory that for the reaction to occur we require collisions and successful collision so if there are more particles there'll be more chances of collision and more chances of successful collision increasing the rate of reaction in the similar way when you talk about surface area when you increase the surface area or surface area to volume ratio the reactants are very exposed to each other so more the exposures of the reactants to each other more will be the collisions and more chances of collision increase the rate of reaction so that is why it says that rather than taking a zinc mass or any reactant mass you take a lump of it or powdered reactant because when you do it in a powdered form you're increasing the surface area to volume ratio so there are more chances of the reaction to take place now when we talk about temperature temperature does two things first of all it makes the particles gain kinetic energy so they collide or bump into each other more frequently secondly as the kinetic energy increases the energy of the particle increases so there are chances that more particles now have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy increasing the rate of reaction so remember temperature does two effect increasing the frequency of collision and increasing the energy for collision next is pressure now pressure only holds true for the gaseous reactants when you increase the pressure it increases the rate of reaction as there will be more particles in a lesser volume so when you increase the pressure what you do we squeeze something when you squeeze it so the particles squash so they collide more they bump into each other more and more the collision more is the rate of reaction now what does catalyst do this is very important you should be able to explain it graphically that we will be doing next with the use of catalyst the rate of reaction increases how this is for the second part of the collision theory that catalyst provides an alternative route to a reaction that lowers the activation energy now as the activation energy of the reaction is lowered now you have the more number of particles having the energy equal to the activation energy increasing the rate of reaction okay so i hope all these factors are clear to you and in all these factors do not forget to take the name of collision theory and if possible explain the theory first and then come to the explanation of all these effects okay in that case you will never lose a mark okay so now let's see how catalyst work now the properties of the catalyst said it is required in small quantities regenerated after the reaction they increases the rate of reaction by providing an alternative route and alternative route lowers the activation energy as the activation energy is lower there are more number of particles having energy equal to or greater than the activation energy increasing the rate of reaction example iron in the habis process nitrogen and hydrogen forms ammonia there we use iron as a catalyst and nickel is used in the hydrogenation of alkene ethene plus hydrogen in the presence of nickel catalyst forms an ethane now catalyst help those reaction that requires a very high temperature or high pressure to be successful at a lower or the moderate temperature and pressure so it helps us to save a lot of electricity and energy cost and helps us to uh, prevent the greenhouse emissions or the fossil fuels emission by lowering the energy cost so it's good and safer for the environment to use the catalyst now this is a very important graph that you should remember if you remember in the energy changes we drew this reaction profile diagram that we have this energy and this is a re uh, reaction coordinate or you can write progress of a reaction the reactants and the products are at a lower energy level and there's a bump and that bump is the activation energy without a catalyst but when you do a catalyst the reactants and the products remains at the same level just this bump decreases here it says enzymes enzymes are biological catalyst so you can write in the exam with catalyst so with and without catalyst you can see the bump is lowered so the activation energy is lowered so the reaction is possible at a lower temperature increasing the rate of reaction okay so i hope this is clear to you 
as always, our next step, as I always, always insist, do check your specification. Make sure whatever thing is there in your specification is crystal clear to you. And do exam questions on this topic, which can be found on my website. Now, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon, which is just to the right so that you can get notified as soon as I put a new video. If you have any doubts in any of this topic, leave a comment below and I'll try to reply you as soon as possible. Or else you can come to my website where I'm available 24 seven on chat before your exam to answer all your queries. Okay, so I'll see you next in the next video. And if there's any specific topic you're finding hard and you want me to put a video on, then also leave a comment below and I'll make sure I'll have that up and running before your exam. So I'll see you next in the next video. Till then, happy revising.